How will SpaceX bring Starship back to Starbase? That is the question that many people, myself included, have been asking. Now, the path for Starship's return has finally been revealed. SpaceX has officially presented a proposal that outlines how the vehicle will make its way back to the launch site, complete with mapped routes and defined steps. But just how significant is this proposal, and what will SpaceX need to do in order to prepare for this plan? Join us as we explore the answers on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Starship has had a turbulent year filled with challenges, setbacks, and even some high-profile failures. Yet despite all of these difficulties, success finally arrived with Flight 10. This mission marked a turning point for the program and provided renewed confidence in the long-term vision SpaceX is pursuing. While we must be cautious in declaring total success since Flight 11 still lies ahead, the progress that has been made opens up entirely new possibilities for Starship's future. One of the most exciting outcomes is that SpaceX may soon be able to return both stages of Starship to the launch site potentially as early as next year. This would represent the first time the vehicle could perform a full return to its origin point at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, rather than being limited to partial reentry paths that terminate elsewhere. However, this raises a critical question. What exact trajectory will Starship take to make this round trip possible? The FAA recently provided an answer. The agency released the Draft Tiered Environmental Assessment, or Draft Tiered EA, for updates to airspace closure for additional launch trajectories and Starship Boca Chica landings of the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy Vehicle at the Boca Chica launch site in Cameron County, Texas. The timing of this document is important. If SpaceX intends to land Starship at its launch site, then oversight agencies like the FAA must review and approve the plan in detail before operations can proceed. Within this draft EA, the projected paths for both ship and booster have been outlined. For the upper stage, the simulation imagery reveals its final approach corridor. Starship will begin its re-entry trajectory over the Northeast Pacific Ocean, north of the Hawaiian Islands. From there, the corridor stretches east and southeast, gradually narrowing as it approaches the northern regions of Mexico, before ultimately reaching its intended destination of Starbase in South Texas. There are three notable details in this imagery. First, the projected corridor includes two distinct zones, colored red and yellow. The red zone appears to represent the primary route for Starship's descent, while the yellow zone serves as a buffer for extension areas that could be used in the event of navigational adjustments. This layered approach provides added flexibility and ensures that contingencies can be managed safely. Second, the corridor extends extends over the Mexican mainland, which introduces significant considerations. Overflight raises questions of public safety, environmental protection, air traffic management, and even international diplomacy. For example, the draft EA notes that the affected corridor can contain as many as 200 aircraft per hour. If SpaceX carries out 22 Starship missions annually, this could disrupt between 133 to 200 flights per mission. When projected over a full year, this amounts to approximately 2,926 to 4,400 affected flights. Clearly, mitigation strategies and coordination with aviation authorities will be essential. Third, the endpoint of the warning zone does not terminate directly at Starbase, but rather extends offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. This design suggests that SpaceX is building in the option for an ocean landing in the event of a failure or last-minute safety concern. We saw a similar approach with the Super Heavy Booster on Flight 6 when a controlled water landing served as a contingency. Though SpaceX will aim for on-site landings, maintaining this offshore option provides a critical margin of safety. Although not shown explicitly on the FAA maps, one can infer the larger global trajectory that Starship would follow before entering this corridor. The vehicle would likely continue along its current ascent path, reaching orbit via the Atlantic, then transiting across the Indian Ocean and possibly over parts of Southeast Asia or Australia before curving into the Pacific. The maps released focus on the re-entry phase, which is why the final corridor into Texas is illustrated. Another important note is that all planned landings for Starship are scheduled during daylight hours. This decision is most likely a safety precaution, because Starship landings are significantly more complex than those of the Falcon 9 or even Super Heavy. Daylight conditions provide the best visibility for both ground teams and tracking systems. Turning to Super Heavy, the FAA assessment reveals additional layers of detail. The booster, of course, begins its journey at Starbase and departs over water. Rather than remaining confined to the Gulf of Mexico, the planned 
and trajectories extend outward into the Atlantic Ocean. Interestingly, two distinct corridors are under consideration. One points northeast, passing over Florida and out into the open Atlantic, while the other heads southeast through the narrow strait between Mexico and Cuba, continuing past Jamaica before entering the Atlantic. This dual option approach indicates that Super Heavy may follow different paths, depending on the specific mission profile or environmental conditions. However, just like with SHIP, these routes introduce significant air traffic considerations. According to the FAA's analysis, the booster's operational area also averages 200 aircraft per hour. With 22 annual launches, each event could impact between 133 and 400 flights. That results in an annual total of roughly 2,926 to 8,800 potentially affected flights. These numbers exceed those of ship's return corridor, which makes sense given the higher air traffic density in the eastern Atlantic regions. Furthermore, the FAA highlights a unique distinction between ship and booster returns. While ship landings will not take place at night, super heavy landings may occasionally be scheduled after dark. The plan allows for approximately three night operations per year. During those periods, air traffic density would be lower, averaging about 10 flights per hour in the relevant airspace. Even so, each nighttime landing could disrupt between 7 and 120 flights, resulting in an annual total of 21 to 360 affected flights. It's clear that extensive debate, consultation, and collaboration will be required before these plans are finalized. The FAA, SpaceX, and other stakeholders must address questions of air safety, environmental protection, and international cooperation. However, the very existence of this proposal reflects a growing confidence within SpaceX. The company is not only envisioning, but actively preparing for full return-to-launch site operations. If realized, this capability would represent a monumental milestone. Full reuse with both ship and booster returning directly to Starbase would establish a new standard for spaceflight operations. The frequency of missions could dramatically increase, while costs would continue to fall. These factors are at the core of SpaceX's long-term strategy to make humanity multiplanetary. The road ahead will not be simple. Regulatory approvals, technical refinements, and operational rehearsals must all take place before the first full return to Starbase is attempted. Yet the draft EA shows us that the framework is already being built. The vision is clear, and the pieces are falling into place. So do you believe that SpaceX's proposed return paths for Starship will become reality in the near future? Reply with the number one in the comments to let me know. And as always, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you can continue following the incredible journey of SpaceX and Starship. Right now, the central questions surrounding Starship are all about progress and preparation. Musk recently revealed that a major milestone flight could take place between Flight 13 and 15, depending heavily on the outcome of Flight 12. In reality, even the results of Flight 11 will play a role in shaping this timeline. At the current pace of roughly one launch every two months, we could see this attempt occur early next year. However, the road to that point involves a tremendous amount of work. One of the most pressing challenges is safety. Starship's projected flight path will carry it over densely populated urban areas as well as key maritime straits that serve as lifelines for global shipping. To proceed, SpaceX will need to demonstrate that the vehicle poses minimal risk to both people and infrastructure. Achieving this will require rigorous testing, detailed simulations, and close cooperation with the Federal Aviation Administration. Domestic environmental agencies will also play a major role as they must assess potential impacts to ecosystems and communities. The complexity increases further when we consider international involvement. Starship's path will cross territory that include Mexico and regions of the Caribbean. Past negotiations with Falcon 9 landings in the Bahamas highlight just how delicate such agreements can be. Even though Falcon 9 is much smaller than Starship, agreements proved difficult and ultimately stalled. With a vehicle of Starship's size, the stakes are far higher. Even a relatively minor issue, such as a heat shield tile being shed mid-flight, could create significant concerns for both safety and liability. The second major preparation involves mastering flight procedures Procedures. Operational consistency is the only way to convince regulatory bodies and partner nations that Starship is ready for routine flights. While Flight 10 was a remarkable success, many challenges remain. Some flights have failed to reach orbit. Engine issues have surfaced at different stages of ascent. Heat shield imperfections and occasional leaks have appeared. Composite overwrapped pressure vessels, or COPVs for short, have also been problematic on multiple missions. Each of these failures provides lessons, but they 
must be corrected and validated before the program can move forward confidently. The next two flights later this year will be crucial. SpaceX will need to resolve lingering issues while progressively increasing mission complexity. This could involve carrying heavier payloads, flying with operational cargo, performing more aggressive reentry angles to conserve fuel, or fine-tuning the precision of landing burns. Each step will push the system closer to readiness for full-scale reusability. Vehicle upgrades are another critical factor. The transition to Starship V3 will bring significant changes. This version is being designed with the catch system in mind, incorporating upgrades to the engines, heat shield, and other systems that directly impact reusability. These enhancements are not just theoretical, but must be proven in flight. SpaceX will likely rely on Flight 12 as the debut mission for V3, using it to validate these upgrades before attempting more ambitious recoveries. Finally, none of this can happen without ground systems operating at full capacity. At least two launch towers with functional Megazilla arms are required to attempt simultaneous catches of both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage. Pad 2 is close to being ready, with operations expected to begin around Flight 12. Pad 1 will undergo significant upgrades, including modifications to its chopsticks, orbital launch mount, and defensive systems. These upgrades must be finished quickly, particularly for handling the ship stage in order to meet SpaceX's ambitious goals. In short, the path ahead for Starship is demanding but achievable. The next several flights will determine whether the program is truly ready to move from experimental tests into operational capability. If if SpaceX can resolve technical issues, validate upgrades, and secure regulatory trust, then the vision of catching and reusing both stages of Starship may soon become reality. And now, SpaceX stands on the brink of yet another groundbreaking milestone in the aerospace industry. While much of the world is still working to replicate Falcon 9's reusability or struggling to bring even small components back safely, SpaceX is preparing to attempt something far more ambitious. Their goal is nothing less than to establish a new standard the full and rapid reusability of Starship. As early as next year, both stages of Starship could return from orbit, fulfilling the vision SpaceX has pursued for decades. The challenges are immense, from engineering hurdles to regulatory approvals, yet this is not unfamiliar territory for a company that has consistently turned the impossible into reality. The path is now outlined, and the team is working tirelessly to bring it to life. Are you ready to witness what could be remembered as the return of the king in SpaceX's Starship era. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.